Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited to be speaking with Arian Bethia. Is it right? Bethia or Bethia? Bethia. 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 <laughs> Look, um, let's, let's tell the people who you are as they slowly sign on. Okay. Uh, let's hear, I want to hear about your vintage shop and I want to hear how you got started and what prompted you to be like storefront business. I want to hear all the great things, all the fabulous things about you. Okay. Yeah. Tell the um, people who you are, where you're from. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, well, I'm Erin Buffet. I am owner of Dressing Rooms Interior Studio uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. Um, <laughs> little, shout out DC. I know. Um, I am. I started the shop ooh, in 2011 um, after being laid off from work, and really came out of the um, idea that I really loved vintage pieces. I inherited a lot of vintage pieces from my mother, and mm -hmm. was learning how to incorporate them in my home, like mix them with new pieces. And because I wasn't finding what I loved on the marketplace and I was seeing mm -hmm. it in these old pieces. And right. so um, I originally started selling online um, with Etsy and Cherish and then um, moved into a multi-merchant space uh, locally here with other vendors. So I was selling mm -hmm. um, with other vendors. And then I, in the meantime, I was doing pop-ups. So trying to get my name out that I was here in Charlotte because a lot of my pieces were being, I was mailing a lot of my pieces to like New York, New Jersey, Texas, <laughs> California. So nothing really here in North Carolina. So I was like, well, that's a problem. So I started doing local pop-up shops to um, again, get my name out that I was here. The goal always being to have a, a shop, a brick and mortar where people can mm -hmm. come in and shop the things and I didn't have to slept them to pop-ups um and i think it was 20 2014 when i opened up my first shop so uh, i've moved since then so i'm in my into my current location but um yeah so i've had the shop for a little over five years oh, okay that's cool and how long have you been in this location oh i've been in this location for two and a half years so this okay. is amazing yes. for me. And it's next to my husband. He's a chiropractor. So we can, he can help me. Which move with <laughs> yes. Which was, the goal, which was the goal to be next to each other so you can help. So he's my mover. He's my muscle. That's good. That's cool. I, that's also inspirational. That's, that says a lot about your marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Really great things. What is, what have been some of the lessons that you have learned opening a business going from online to being brick and mortar? And which is, is there, is anyone, is either one easier for you? Uh, so, I mean, I still sell online. I have my pieces on, on my website. Some of them, everything's not available online. Some pieces are. <laughs> um, I guess one of the biggest lessons I learned, I won't even say it's from online, it's from corporate because I have a, uh, a human resources background. So this is not my, my background, um, was learning to trust my gut and on things. And so I feel like in corporate, you know, you're kind of just, you know, prove it. You kind of have to prove things. It's not mm -hmm. a, a gut reaction. And so mm -hmm. that was the hardest thing for me to trust my gut into even opening the shop and, and just kind of keep, keep moving. Um, even when like challenges came up. So that was, yeah. Online is, um, Having a store is great because I get to interact with customers, which I do love. Even as an introvert, <laughs> I still love interacting with customers, finding out where the piece is going, where they're going to put it. Um, and they get to come and touch it and see it and sit on it and see the fabric. And, right. and there's a lot of pieces that photos don't do it justice. So when you get mm -hmm. to see it, it's better. Um, so that's what I, I love more about online. I mean, in the store than, than online. Okay. And do you... Oh, what was I just lost my train of thought. So with having the brick and mortar, how do you keep the business going? Because I know like you have set hours. What are your, what days do you work and what are your hours? So I'm open on uh, Thursday, Fridays and Saturdays. And then, um, and then by, nice. appointment, <laughs> by appointment the other day. So 
the other days I'm out like sourcing, I'm getting fabric, I'm picking up things from my upholster, um, you know, doing other things um, than, you know, sitting in the shop, so. Yeah. But it also helps too, because you do interior design. And so you're, those days that you're not with the brick and mortar, you're actually with clients and doing things like that. How do you, is that how you get your clients or did you, what came first, the clients or, or like there's a, there's a mix in there somewhere. Yeah, there's a mix. So um, clients, well, people would shop in the store and then they would be like, oh, I like, you know, your style or I like how you put things together. And they would ask me if I have interior design services. So it kind of organically happens that way. Um, and I'd only take a couple, maybe two to three clients a year that had like mm -hmm. larger projects, like multiple rooms, because I don't have a ton of time. So right. um, and with things taking as long as they take to finish, you know, it's it's better this way. So I'm right. finishing up um, some projects now. and. Yeah, so that allows me time to go sit with the client. Um, they can also come in the, in the shop as well. Um, but it allows me to go back and forth. It gives me that time and flexibility. No, that's cool. Um, are we allowed to talk about the photo shoot that happened? I don't know. Can we, can we celebrate that a little? <laughs> oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's like a, I don't know. It didn't. It's not like confidential, but I don't. I don't necessarily want to talk about it just yet. Okay, no, no. I, I haven't it. seen it. I haven't seen it. Well, that's true too. Um, can we talk about what that, well, well, anyway. <laughs> There's so much I want to say. And I was like, I got to be mindful of what I'm saying here. Um, congratulations and God bless anyway, because Thank that's you. just exciting because it was spoken about here in New York. What are some of the most valuable lessons that you have learned being in business that has trans like being in HR and then going into business, how has that helped you? Because people skills is a must in this industry. And I don't think people understand. And I love when you like educate people on manners. Can I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> because it really makes me crazy when people slide into my DMs and you know, or they're on the page and you'll post something and they're like, where's that? Or, you know, they just go right at it. And I'm like, how about, hi, how yeah. are you? And yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah. That's, yeah. How, how, let's talk about that. So the <laughs> HR thing came from, well, I'll just give a, a little background. So I work in, uh, I work in training and development. And so um, I had an office, I worked at a, a college and university, a university. At the, and now it's a university, but, um, and I was designing my office and, you know, I made friends with the trades and uh, had them build me, you know, some custom shelving in my, in my office. And so uh, my supervisor at the time, we all would meet as a team in her office and it was, you know, configured poorly. So I was always like looking at it like, there's, there's a better way to do this. And so, you know, she went on vacation. And I said, I'm gonna redo your office when you come back. And she was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> And so I had the trades build her some shelving and then just kind of changed the floor plan out. And so she came back and um, she was like, oh my God, you should do this for a living. And I was like, oh my God, I should do this for a living. Cause I was <laughs> at that transition point where I was like, I don't want to do this thing anymore, but I don't know right. what I want to do. And right. so that's when I kind of that put, you know that was my aha, my Oprah moment of like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, that was a, that's a great idea. Um, so, pulling okay so then you asked me about HR but um I think having that like corporate because I've worked in banking um before is very helpful in you know working with these trades and working with um vendors uh the sense of you know urgency we have in corporate is way different than how things move in the design world um the level of professionalism is different I mean corporate has their own thing but like but, working right. Working with in this world is very different. Like the logic is just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So um, it's, it's kind of hard for me to <laughs> operate in this world. I'm like, this is, how are people getting anything done? I really, really don't understand. <laughs> um, you know. I need an end time. I need a severe end time. <laughs> yeah, like, like respond to the email. Like, you know, I don't, all the information is there. Anyway, so uh, transitioning to, to design and then, um, also the shop, you know, 
making sure that you know people know that there's a person behind the shop and it's not like a bot answering your questions. So right. I have to remind people like just say hello, you know. Um, mm-hmm. cause if you were on the street and you saw something that someone you know had on that you loved, you wouldn't just be like, where'd you get that from? You know, you'd be like, hi, oh my God, I love your shirt or I love your right. earrings. Right. And you would, it would be a little, you know, mannerless. Yeah. Um so I, people have gotten really much better I mean I have to put out my little post every so often but um people have gotten much better so they're always like hey how much is that or whatever because I do um a lot of business in my dms I know some people mm-hmm. don't but a lot of you know people ask me questions about items and I don't I'm one of them <laughs> and I have a problem sending them photos in the video so um, I understand you get excited about an item you're like oh my god how much is that and I, and I get right. that I can right. feel that in some of it, but some of it's a little rude. Right. No, oh, absolutely. And it's just mindful. Like, like you said, if you saw me on the street, you'd be like, oh my God, I love that. You know, you look so beautiful. You would, that's one dog. Um, you know, you would be more mindful and more polite about it. Do you, can we walk around in your showroom and see some things? Oh, or sure. how, how do I do that? Am I, am I turning the, the camera? I guess around? you could turn it around. Um, yeah, I, I guess so. Look, we're not savvy that way. <laughs> mm, let me see. How does that work now, Gail? Let's see. Oh, Don't you know me. what? Maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't. Oh, uh, I, I was hoping to show that. show the people. Well, they can always go on online and see what you have. They Do can. you have any fa- favorite pieces? I Let me just say for the record, I love those brass lamps. Oh, which one? I do have a couple of pair. Which one are you talking about? Well, there was, it was funny because you had did a post and the lamps were in the back and I was like, oh my God, those are beautiful. And you're like, what brass lamps? And then I had to like yeah. circle and send it to you. When oh. I when I finish the room, I'm going to shoot it and I'll show you and I'll send it. Oh, you. okay, yay. But they were just absolutely amazing. They had the white shade with the gold. Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Very beautiful. Now, how when you go an- antiquing, how often do you go? Like, you really have a great eye. Like, you have an amazing eye. And the furniture pieces that you get are really amazing. So I have um, a pair of chairs that I'm excited to, I mean, they've been with my poster for like five months. <laughs> I mean, but that's, I, that's not new to anybody. That's probably right. um, But uh, they're a vintage pair of Baker chairs that I had redone. And um, she sent me a little photo because I was like, um, am I going to get them by the end of the year? Um, so, uh, and so she sent me, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So I'm excited about those coming in the shop. Um, and a few other pieces I'm, I'm going to have recovered and things. So I, I do love that I get to um, put my own stamp on a piece. So I get to recover it in the fabric that I want uh, with nobody in mind. So I don't have a customer in mind. I mean, I right. imagine the piece in a home, but I'm the, you know, I'm the customer. I'm like, oh, I would love to see this like this. And so I get to see that. And so that's not always the case for a designer. You're always doing, you know, what your customer wants you to do. You don't really get, sometimes you get to do what you want to do, but it's really for the customer. But, you know, I get to do what I want to do here. So I really love that. So when you do, when you do find stuff and sometimes you'll get, you'll be like, oh, it's for a client. Do you automatically put the new fabric on it? Or do you wait until you show the client and then you're like, okay, when you're doing the schematic? So the weird thing is none of my clients like vintage. (laughs) You got to have something of vintage in your house. Like, I mean, I feel that way. I'm sitting on a vintage couch now. I'll put in some accessories, but like Mm -hmm. furniture wise, they want, they want new. And I, it's, it's odd to me because I'm like, why did you, it's not like I sought them out. They came to me. I'm like, don't you know what I do? Like, I do vintage they work. walk into your shop and love your shop. So <laughs> yeah. why would they not like? I don't, I, I, it's, it baffles me. So um, I, 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 I'll st- sneak in some lamps and some accessories, but the furniture is mainly, you know, new. Yeah. Or I'll recover what they have, you know? Okay. And the fa- the pieces that you have, because a lot of your pieces go on to Cherish, correct? Some of them. Some of them go okay. on to Cherish, yeah. And well, they then, to Cherish, so I like to sell them in the shop first. <laughs> okay, so then That's here's the awesome. question, because you have big pieces. You have sofas. Okay. I mean, you have, so how do you ship that to clients without 
Oh, I have a white glove shipper. So I have someone that'll come wrap it and send it. Okay, so there's that. no angst there because you know no. shipping be big pieces, and no. then you just pray that it gets there. Fine. No, it gets there. No, I have no problems with my my. Is <laughs> she like, nope, nope? I got this all covered. Yeah. How? So where are the the? It's the shipping, the UPS, and the FedEx that I have no control over. But my shipper, yeah, it's good. But the <laughs> UPS and the other stuff, I have no control over that. So. So where do you ship mainly to? Do you find coming up north or? It's everywhere now. I mean, Texas has been um, pretty big. Um, Florida. It's really like all over the country. It just really depends on the item. Georgia. I mean, the South. And then California and my New York and my New Jersey folks. So, yeah, it's just kind of like a you, like all down the South, you know, from the East Coast to the, from the West Coast to the East Coast. Yeah. So I guess you come in every day and it's, but that's good because then your, your product moves really fast. At least it seems like it moves fast to me because Something every time I go like on, it fly. says sold out, sold out, sold yeah. out, sold out. And I'm like, she just put it up. Some things fly. Like, you know, sometimes the things I think I'm like, this is gonna, and it sits. And then the thing that I didn't think was gonna, you know, be so popular is gone. So it, it just, it just depends. I, I don't have a, it's not a formula for it. I don't know. Because I don't have like multiples of vintage things. So, you know, the one offs, so I'm just like, oh, that was popular. Okay, that worked. Or, oh, no, that wasn't. That sat a little while. Or I had to, you know, sometimes I bring things in in their original condition and people like, yes, I love it. Or it reminded me of something my grandmother had or I had one when I was little and it has a sentimental kind of memory for them and they'll, they'll gravitate towards it um, in its original condition. And then some things I have to recover. They'll just, sit and there's no interest in it and so i'm just like you know what i'm just going to recover it how i imagine it to be and um see where it happens wow so do you keep up well since you're saying that the clients that you have don't want vintage or don't like vintage do you go and get new pieces from high point or from different vendors and then have it in and then that's how they see it and you sell it that way as well yeah i've taken um a client to high point we were doing multiple rooms and i wanted her to sit on the sectional and see if she you know loved it so yeah i'll, I'll take a client yeah i'll take a client to high point for something like that god bless you and how far is high point from you oh it's not far it's um about an hour 45 minutes uh, or less yeah yeah so that i that's yeah that's amazing shopping with clients is amazing i try not to do that if i'm well, we are I've already <laughs> like i already know the showrooms we're going to I already have an idea of the product. So we're really not there <laughs> running around looking. It's like, okay. we're here, we're looking at this over. We're going here, we're looking here. Yeah. Okay. Not, you're very controlled with that. Yeah. Here. No. Yeah. Cause I've gone to the D and D and I've seen, I watched designers come in with their client and it just seemed like they had no control at all. No. Or like the clients, you know, for us, we see it. It's just like, whatever, we're very focused, but for them, it's like, oh, this is overwhelming. This is, yeah. They're like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, yeah. And then nope. you see the client taking over. I already know so what we're looking at. We go sit on it and touch it. We look at the finishes and we go, yes, yes, yes. And that's it. Yeah. So it's like an in and out. <laughs> okay. That's cool. And do you absolutely love this? Like, do you feel like you're like, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing? Yes. Cause you're multi hyphenate, you know? Like, um, when I'm, when definitely when I'm in the store, I'm like, yes, this is where like I belong. Like this is what I should be doing. And, and especially when I get to like, style the shop and I'm bringing in new stuff and I just kind of everything's everywhere and then I just kind of flip it and make it look like something new um that's like the best because yeah that's the best feeling it's like a high it's like an endorphin <laughs> <laughs> we need those daily how has COVID affected your business if at all um not I'm just trying to think it hasn't really affected it um, because I was still shipping. Um, when COVID mm -hmm. first started, I had just revamped my website. So I'd put a bunch of stuff online. And so I was, I was shipping a lot. So I would just come to the shop and ship things out. And that was it. And then um, I did buy appointments. So I did like kind of all the phases, you know, um, before I actually like opened back up to the public. So, and because people couldn't get stuff, people were at home, they wanted their you know, house to look a certain yes. way, um, it, it didn't affect my business. It, it, it you know, it, like, it was 
not good for it. I want to say COVID was good, but right. Um, you know, people were wanting to wanting home good items. So. Right. And we couldn't go out. So we're like, okay, out, we yeah. can get online. So I would like have my shipper come pick up stuff. And, you know, it was just, you know, pretty much just me in and out, you know, getting things and shipping them out and then meeting my shipper to pick up larger items. So, um, yeah, it was harder to get stuff. So I was like on auctions and stuff like that. It was really hard to, to find things, I will really? say. Yeah. And see, I would think it would be easier. Um, I want to talk business because a lot of people think that when you have a storefront, like it's, it's automatic money. Um, <laughs> no, they do. A lot of people are like, oh, you just get a storefront and then people know where to find you and then they'll be there. And then, you know, you're going to make money hand over fist and, you know, and I'm like, I don't think you understand like all that goes into a storefront. What are some of the lessons that, that you think people should know? I think that they think, you open up a shop, you open the door and people are going to be right there every day. It's unless you have like a ton of money to put into marketing and advertising, that's not how it works. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, my, my strategy, you know, whether I didn't know it would work or not, but my strategy early on was like, I will start online and then I will move in, you know, I'll do some pop-ups. I move into a multi-merchant space all along, you know, trying to build my reputation like oh she's here she does this she's been consistent this kind of thing and try to build a following and then open up a shop um because i didn't have money to you know put into marketing i mean there right. i've seen people you know open up a shop to throw a ton of money into marketing and advertising and be successful at it um right um that's just that wasn't my case so right. um i had to do the slow the slow grind and so the, the hardest thing coming from corporate was uh, stead a check every two weeks. Like mm -hmm. not having a check every two weeks was like anxiety inducing. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, where's this money? Okay, the bills come consistently every month. Yeah. Like, like, where is this money coming from? Yes. You know? And so I think opening up, just being an entrepreneur period is, the, is a faith walk. Like it's just, you just gotta believe in what you're doing and, and be consistent in doing it. And- that's it. I mean, and just, you know, money's like an ebb and flow. It comes in and out and just, you just gotta, yeah. And just work at it. That's, that, that's it. There's no, like, you know, unless you have, you know, money. <laughs> All right. 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 <laughs> no, I, it's, it's a really big misconception um, that people are like, Oh, get a storefront and it'll be okay. It'll be easier. And I was like, no, you have overhead. And if you have employees, you got to worry about that. You have to have insurance for that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so do all you, do you handle your Instagram yourself or do you have someone? No, I handle you? my Instagram. I handle my Instagram because I like the interaction with, um, I've made so many friends over Instagram. I like oh, the yeah. interaction <laughs> of, um, and have, managing my own Instagram. Okay. And then also getting your storefront, was it, was the first, like, okay, now that I decide I have a space and I have vendors, is it like, okay, I need an accountant or CFO or somebody to handle that, that you meet with weekly, like the business aspect of it? Because I'll, so I'm you looking know. at, um, I have an accountant, um, but I'm looking at a CFO, like bringing somebody on to do that. So I've just been recently looking at that. So um, yeah. Um, and particularly because I just hired an employee. So I'm like, yeah, I got to. <laughs> I do that so um and i'll be running payroll and stuff like that but i used to run payroll because i'm an hr so that's like second nature so that's not a problem but um i think that part that helps because you know the job you know i had job descriptions and all these things you know that i'd mm -hmm. already worked up like this is what i wanted them to do and and things like that so um and already having that background was helpful so yeah, you need, you need all the things. I mean, when I first started, I didn't have any of those things, which is me, you know, doing my, you know, profit and loss statements and all of that for my accountant. So, I mean, to give to her, like, is this, am I doing this right? You know, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but having that, actually, I helped my husband open up his practice. So having that experience of helping him was helpful for me as well. So his practice came first, his business was mm -hmm. first and then yours. Okay. 
And then the two of you just figured like you found space next to each other. You always knew you wanted to be next to each other yeah. or no? We were like, we, it, being next to each other would be the like one of the goals so that we can help each other. So if I needed to, because I know, I'm not a whiz at a computer, but I'm better than he is. So <laughs> if something happened with the computer, I could like fix it or help him or whatever. So, right. um, but most of the time it's him just coming over here like, hey, I need you to move this sofa over here or you know, that sort of thing, or help this customer to the car with this so far. Um, right. <laughs> so that's been, yeah, it's been helpful. For oh sure. God. Does anybody have any questions? Because I know people do, Annie, you can tell me, because once again, I can never see the Q&A on this. Mm -hmm. I try to look. Nothing. I don't see any questions yet. No. Um, no, this has really been good. Is there anything else that you want to share? I mean, because I follow you on Instagram and you, you really do make it look easy. And I want you, no, I want you to know that because that, that is a testament to how amazing you are, that you can make it look effortless and that you always make it look fun and you're very engaging. And I have to tell you, most introverts are that way. I am an ambivert, like I have my extrovert moments. And in some days I'm like, I've had enough of people. I need to just go silent for a little while. But you really do <laughs> would make me go, you know what? I need to get a storefront. I need to, I need to have, cause this, this is, what I'm doing is just not enough. Because you, just, you, you get on there and you have your lives and you show what's in the shop and I'm always chomping at the bits to see what's in the shop because I'm like what do I what do I want or you know what do I need and I was like sometimes this is just a want you know so I, I want to thank you for that well I need to show y'all the behind the scenes thing because it is <laughs> <laughs> um you know me back and forth you know loading and unloading and loading and unloading and loading and unloading stuff um yeah, it is not. And and if someone asked me about that, like the um, and I I get so in my head about styling that I don't stop to say, oh, I should video the shop looking crazy and a mess, and then you know what it looks like after. I I don't do that. I just it's so much to move and to do. I'm so focused on like not breaking something, damaging you know anything as I'm constantly moving and shuffling stuff around. So it's a it's a lot of work. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I have people go, oh, you should show behind the scenes. I'm like, I'm busy working. I I'm like not gonna be like this is a this is a photo op. This is a moment. This is a video to share. I'm like, I just need to get this done. Yeah. So I just need to get I mean no. driving to go take to my post and drive back. I mean, it's just a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and how often do you go to your upholsterer? Right now, not often because it's taking so long. Um, I have multiple. So there's some that are better at uh, things than others. So mm -hmm. um, I will be dropping some chairs off. I got to go get fabric tomorrow, drop some chairs off. Um, it just depends on what I get in and, you know, if I decide I need to recover something because it hadn't sold. Like, oh, this hasn't sold. It probably needs to be in different fabric. All right, let me just find, find something. Some Do you all have a design center near you? No. Um, high Point will be the closest well, because they're trying okay. to do High Point by design to be open you know, the first week of every month. Uh -huh. um, but um, I have, you know, local sources for um, furniture, well, for um, fabric. fabric. Yeah. Okay. And someone's asking, what type of camera do, do you use for your photos? Oh, just my iPhone. Actually, I have a, a 11 XR. Mm -hmm. um, but listen, you know, that's a good one. No, the, the 13, I haven't got it yet, but I ordered the 13 because I had the three cameras. So I was like, I can't wait to see what this is going to do. But um, um, how yeah. long is it going to take? Because that's a, that's on back order, right? The 13? Yeah, it, it should come in like the, the second week of November. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait until you get it. Then you tell me what it's all about. <laughs> Another <laughs> question is, <laughs> do you have a schedule for posting content? And how did you get started with social media? Oh, God. So I got started... <laughs> I think I look back, I think I started Instagram maybe in 2011, 2010, it's been a minute. Um, and my schedule for posting is usually, when I'm in the shop, I usually post three times a day. Um, mm -hmm. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I usually do three posts a day. 
And then the rest of the week, it depends on like what's going on. Sometimes I don't post. If I'm not feeling inspired to post, I don't post. Um, if I have something to say, I'll post. So it, mm -hmm. the rest of the week just depends on my mood and what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's well, not like a tight schedule. I give myself freedom. <laughs> no, you should because I play mean, to Instagram. <laughs> No, it, it becomes insane. And next thing you know, you're not really living your life. It's always like, what's here? And it's 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 really anxiety driven for me too. Mm -hmm. Like I have to like walk away from it sometimes and just be like, okay, like I only post Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And like I set it up at least a week or two in advance. So this way I don't have to okay. be concerned about it. Yeah, I right. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? I sit there and I'm like, okay, let me post for all of October. And then I'll be like, here's what, how I feel about it. Oh, I and that. I just sit there and I just give myself like an hour, two hours. And I pluck, you know, I plunk in everything because I'm really trying to manage my anxiety with that. Because I, I will admit it just puts me over the edge. Yeah, a lot, for a lot of people it does. I, I just, <laughs> I don't know it far in advance what my, my months are going to look like. Uh, so right. What am I having in the shop? So I can't plan that. <laughs> that yeah. I just, I'm like mood board Monday. So I'll do a bunch of schematics. Right. And I'll be okay. like, okay, you know, just something easy. Yeah. I think it would be very different if I had a shop like yours. Then I'd be like, okay, you know, very different. We all have to feel the energy of it. So yes. this has been I great. I want to, you know, Thank you for agreeing to doing it and for doing it so early in the morning. Normally I do it in the afternoon, okay. but today's like a kind of crazy Zoom day. <laughs> no problem. I'm already at the shop and I was going to be here anyway. So it was perfect timing. Okay. So people make sure you go and follow her and it's at dressing room interior studio, correct? Well, actually my Instagram is dress my room because I had my dress Instagram my so long that you couldn't have that many characters when I first <laughs> <laughs> so now you can't but you can, you can have them so I didn't want to like mess up with people following me and change it so I was like it's been just my room for so long okay and before we go we have one more question they said how do you both oh how do you both stay inspired faith uh, <laughs> I mean even vacation that's what <laughs> usually we go away somewhere and get like just take a break um we haven't done that in a while and then it's really needed but um word and, you know we we relax we watch tv we laugh a lot you know that's kind of how we do it for me um it's dog park every morning i'm in the reservation mm -hmm. um and i just as much as i can take walks or i just get on my bicycle and i'll just go riding my new thing is now i bought a pair of skates so i'm gonna oh, start roller skating too. again <laughs> too. we went so that's the other, like i just need to do stuff where like my mind can just be like free and yeah. not have like work out all my anxiety and then I'm like okay but you're right there's a vacation that's needed that's coming up because I just need to decompress and just like step back because COVID has really whooped me so yeah, yeah. well thank you ma'am no problem thank for you. joining I love me. your blanket I love the blanket I see I know <laughs> it's from hers I was like, send me that. And the other one is in the living room, but I love, love, yes, love please. these. Like, I'm so excited. When you get more, let me know. Like I could never have enough blankets. I have um, more. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Cause I'm good. All right, party people. Thank you so much. Make sure you follow her and follow us. And this has been recorded. So if you missed any part, you can check it out. Go have a good day. Thanks, babe. Thank you. Bye, beautiful people. <laughs>